Episode two, beer two. Hey, I'm Ben. I'm a huge fly fisherman. Welcome back to another episode of Huge Fly Fisherman. This video is episode two about fly fishing for bass. If you haven't seen episode one yet, it's right here. In episode one, we went over bass facts in general and talked about what equipment and flies to use. In episode two, we're gonna talk about where to find bass and methods and techniques for catching them. I mean, I like to catch them. Are you ready? Because we're gonna start right now. As I said in the first video, you can find bass all over the place. Now, I didn't do any research, but I bet you can find bass in every US state except Alaska. Bass will live in tiny drainage ponds or huge reservoirs. They might be in a small warm water creek or a big cold river. They're like everywhere. There's a word for that, ubiquitous. Look it up. So when you've located a piece of water that you would like to fish for bass, where should you look? I've got one word for you, transitions. Well, two words, I guess. Transitions and structure. But let's talk about structure first. You probably already know what this means. Piers, docks, down trees, rock piles, lily pads, anything that's in the water that's not water. It doesn't have to be big. One stick can hold a fish. Bass are ambush predators. They sit and wait for prey to bumble along in front of them, and then they attack. Bass use structure to hide. Structure is a good place to find bass. Okay, now transitions. Transitions can be more subtle than structure and tougher to figure out. A transition is just where one thing changes into another, like the edge of a weed bed, or where rocky bottom changes into muddy or weedy bottom, or where shallow water meets deep water. And I don't mean like a steady slope, I mean where you have shallow water that ends in a drop off to deep water. That's a transition and that's a good place to find bass. Fish those edges and transitions. Oh, points and coves are really good too. Before we go any further, I wanna say that I know not everyone has access to a beautiful bass lake like this one where I am right now. This place has it all. Weed lines, down snags, docks, marked brush piles, everything. But I grew up bass fishing probably a lot like you, just kicking it around the neighborhood. All you kids out there that are riding your bike to fish a drainage pond or sneak onto a golf course, y'all are the real MVPs. You don't need a sparkly boat with a 250 on the back and a dozen rods laid out on the deck. That stuff is nice, but most people don't fish like that. Don't believe everything you see on the gram. All right, now let's talk about how to catch them. Well, it's the same thing I say in a lot of my videos like this. Get Get the fly in front of the fish's face. That's the hardest part. I'm not gonna cover all of the different ways to fish all of the different bass flies because that video would be too long. Put your fly in front of a fish and twitch it and move it around and stuff. If you see a fish, great, cast to it. The fat end, not the skinny end. But most of the time you'll be fishing blind and just casting at stuff that looks good, like those structures and transitions that we talked about. You'll have to get your fly close. The fish are not gonna move very far to eat. So hit that dock with your fly, or don't be scared to get caught in a tree. If you can get your fly way back there into that thick stuff, you're probably gonna catch more fish. Landing your popper five feet away from a stump isn't gonna cut it. Hit the stump. If you're fishing something like a weed line or a shoreline, if possible, try to swim your fly parallel to whatever you're fishing. It's better to swim your fly alongside that feature rather than cast at it and pull it away. It keeps the fly in that sweet spot for longer. So you've found the right lake, you cast your bug into a sweet clump of lily pads and twitched it around a little bit. What happens next? Well, hopefully it's something like a toilet flushing in front of you. A whoosh! Well, you set the hook. Now you're not trout fishing here, so you're gonna have to break all of those habits. You don't have to set the hook immediately. A bass will chew on your fly for a bit and that's okay. They eat pokey things like crawdads and baby snapping turtles all the time. If they chomp down on your fly and feel the hook, that doesn't mean they're gonna spit your fly out. So you don't have to have lightning quick reflexes, but you can't just sit there all day before you set the hook. Just wait a second, that's all it takes. Maybe say something to yourself like, I'm a huge fly fisherman before you set the hook. This is most important when fishing surface flies. These fish have big mouths. I mean, they're called largemouth bass for crying out loud. You have to give them time to close their mouths and take that fly down. Just a little though, not too much. So how do you set the hook then? Well, you strip set, don't trout set. Keep your rod tip low and pull back on the fly line with your line hand. Once you've got a solid hook up, then you can bend the rod and put the wood to them, as they say. I know you might wanna do that Bassmaster's hook set because it looks super awesome, 
but don't do it. I'll talk more about the strip set when I get around to doing a video about different hook sets. I don't want to say too much about it right now. So that's going to do it on my two-part series about fly fishing for bass. There's nothing else you could possibly learn about bass fishing. Thanks for watching another huge fly fisherman video. I'll be back next Monday like I am every Monday with a video about something about fly fishing. Like and subscribe buttons are right here. Go to hugeflyfisherman.com and buy some things to support the channel. Go get some Lunker bucket mouth hogs and give them a squeeze for me and stay huge. Bass. Bass. Bass fishing.